Welcome back to Real Life Reviews and in this video we're going to take a look at a sports bag. A sports bag that you can just carry as a normal hold all or wear as a rucksack on your back. And this is the Ogeo or Ogeo M9. That's the specific collaboration that Ogeo, who have a great reputation in the luggage market anyway, but collaboration that they have with Iron Man. This bag though, you can uh, is pretty much their endurance nine there's a couple of small features that are slightly different in particular this one has two armored pockets instead of one uh, however my aim is to show you that an enormous amount of kit can go into this bag you can then decide is this the bag for you as opposed to maybe a more traditional transition bag so what i'm saying is that this bag can be your gym bag and your transition bag and it can carry an awful lot of kit because we as triathletes and for that matter runners cyclists swimmers whatever are serial overpackers we want to cover every possible situation we want to have spares we want a second pair of goggles we want a choice of run shoes sometimes uh, we want spare wetsuits you name it okay you get the idea and essentially we've all been there I'm sure that person who's next to us in transition or one or two down, who's just forgotten that last piece of kit or is panicking because they don't have a spare tube for the bike leg in case they get a puncture, you become their hero because you've got enough to spare and you can, you know, lend them out. So, is this bag the solution? What I'm gonna do, it's, it's probably um, brilliant for me in the sense that I'm quite OCD, it's got a lot of compartments. And if you get used to the bag, you know where you put things. I think you're gonna love this bag. It's got compartments everywhere, and a number of them are labeled with suggestions as to what you might take. So just to start off with, before I get up and start packing the bag and explaining what I'm doing, the volume of this bag, it's a 58.3 liter bag, although, if you look on some sites, it's listed as 56 litres, not a lot of difference, but it has a couple of expansion pocket areas, and with the expansion, you're looking at 74 and a half litres. That's a lot of volume. So let's start by sort of packing this bag, and I'm gonna to endeavour to pack it as both a gym bag and also a transition bag. So that's gonna be a lot of kit. So let's, I'll get up and we'll have a look. I'm gonna start by packing some of the larger items. So if I turn the bag over to reveal its base, you'll see the Iron Man logo in there. However, if I undo the bottom of the bag, see it's waterproof lined, and I'm gonna put in there my wetsuit. It's pretty cold maybe, so just to take account for anything else, I'm gonna put in my hood, and maybe my halfway stage, my headband and I'm going to do that up. So that's my wetsuit away and I hope you'll see that actually you could put two wetsuits in there. Now the beauty of this pocket is that post exercise when you've got more wet smelly kit is if I turn it a bit further we have an expansion zip which if I take that all the way around and back again opens that up into or gives us another well I was going to say two inches but probably three inches of space so we can load that later and in particular if this is your gym bag and you've got a towel large towel that's now wet after you've showered in the gym that's going to come into here so excellent right let me just zip that back up and keep him as small as possible for as long as possible so I mentioned going to the gym Let's turn him over and open up the main compartment. And the first thing I'm going to do in the main compartment, which is, I think cavernous is the current in term for that. And I'm going to put in the bottom of there, my gym towel for after showering. This is a large beach towel. So I'm not scrimping on size here. And I'm just going to put him in the bottom. I've also inside got a little zip pocket and that's where I think I'm going to put my gym ID or if you've still got a 
hard race license or something like that. If I turn the bag around to get to the end pocket, I've got another large pocket here. It's lined so that we can put wet kit in it and dirty kit if we need to and it won't um, impregnate, it won't uh, contaminate the main compartment. It's also got breathable mesh on both sides and the suggestion here, it's labelled, it's wet stroke dry or shoe storage. So for sake of argument, I'm going to put my running shoes in that pocket. There is still loads of space and I could get my cycling shoes in there if I wanted, but I'm gonna keep that for running because I might uh, a little bit later on want to put some more running kit in. So I'm gonna zip him back up and take my cycling shoes and I'm gonna put those into the main compartment. Staying at this end of the bag, I have the first of the armoured pockets. It's not just the top. If I open the zips up, then inside is armoured as well. So this is a, the smaller of the two. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in my sunglasses. I have a, uh, a spare set of lenses for those sunglasses. I'm going to slot those in as well. So one's mirrored, one's photochromatic. My spare sunglasses, because I'm a triathlete and I want loads of kit and I'm always covering every eventuality. And in fact, I have two sets of spare lenses for those glasses. There's still space in there. I'm gonna close it up. And both these armored cases, if you can see, have a padlock loops, have two rings. So when you close the zips, the rings go together and you can padlock the two armored cases. Whilst I'm on, armoured cases, I'm going to spin the bag around, go to the larger of the two armoured cases and in this one I'm going to put for safekeeping my phone, my wallet and I've made it chunky not because I've got a shed load of money in it, I've just filled it up with all sorts of rubbish but my wallet, my bike head unit is going in there. Uh, I'm also going to put in my goggles, keep them safe, my spare set of goggles my chest strap, just give him a little fold. He can go there. And my spare chest strap, just in case I put the first one on and the batteries are flat. And rather than fiddle around changing batteries, my spare chest strap. Close him up. And all of these zips have nice tags on them corded and with a nice rubberized grip and he's there and I could fit more bits and pieces in there as well if I wanted to. I'm now going to go back to my main compartment and going down to the bottom of the compartment again so I'm trying to pack this so that what I need first will be at the top within reason. I've got a spare set of tracksuit trousers so I'm thinking about gym wear and what I'm going to put on afterwards if I'm not going to put back on what I've gone to the gym in. That's just a, a major, major bonus. Uh, running shorts, I might want to put those in. And at the same time, I might want a separate running shirt. So in he goes. At the moment, I've put nothing in the cycling shoes, which is obviously a space, and same with the running shoes, that I could utilise. Whilst I'm on the running then, so... I might want to use them. I'm going to put in some compression socks and these are long ones. So in they go. And a compression top and some compression tights. We're massively overdoing what we're putting in here. I might want to change completely into cycling. So cycling top and also bib shorts. In they go. In addition, let's not forget the tri-suit. He's out the back here. Let's just slot the tri-suit in, get him there. Mustn't forget a smartish polo shirt for wearing afterwards. And I'm also going to have a jacket. So I'm not scrimping on anything here and for transition, and it's quite a big one, a colourful towel, big hint, big tip this, colourful towel so that I can find 
my place in transition. And I'm going to zip up the top of the bag. So I have not scrimped at all in what I'm putting in that bag. And that is the main compartment, but we're not finished yet. In this end of the bag, behind the armoured uh, pocket, we have another end zip compartment that we can fill up. I'm not going to overfill this. I'm going to slide in here my run visor and I'm going to put in my cycling socks and my running socks and I'm going to leave it at that. And they sit down nicely. Again, still got a good amount of space in there before I now turn around to the sides of the bag. Cancel that. I've just seen, I've got my, my protein shake bottle. I'm going to put that, and this is a habit of mine, so I don't really know why, but it's just a habit. This is hard, and I tend to put this in with my shoes, because there's plenty of space. The bottle can go in there, and just to show how much room there is, as much as anything, I suppose, in that end pocket. If I spin the bag round to one side, then I get the first of my side pocket areas and inside it's labelled up, it actually says nutrition organisation. You don't have to use this for nutrition, but what it does have, if I can try to show you, is it has three webbed pockets along the bottom and it also has two larger zipped pockets on the inside and as well as that, it has a, another clear pouch for you to put anything that you want. Again, that could be labelling, it could be memo notes, uh, have you packed this, it could be your packing list, whatever. I'm going to adjust the camera a little and put it in from the top a little bit so you can see what I put in here. I'm going to pretty much stick with nutrition in here. I know people that use side pockets like this on either this bag or different bags and what they tend to do is have one side as essentials and the other side as spares. It, how you organize it is obviously up to you. But in the larger zip pockets here, I tend to put uh, gels because it's the waterproof fabric or more waterproof fabric rather than a mesh pocket. And therefore, should you get a split, then hopefully you're not gonna get gunge over all your kit. So I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, actually I might as well keep going, five, six. I'm going to put six gels in the first pocket and then in the middle mesh pocket for no other reason than I've just un I'd unzipped it, I'm going to put some energy bars. I've got three here. I'm going to slide those into there, push them down, one, two, and that longer one and zip him up. I'm going to in, oh, let's use that zip pocket. The other bigger one doesn't need to be bigger. I've got some nuts and seed packets there just for little nibbles. Put him in there and cliff blocks. Let's do that up. I'm going to put cliff blocks into a mesh pocket. So I've still got an unused mesh pocket. I've still got space in the ones I've used, or the gel one to be fair is quite full now because I've massively filled the main compartment. However, I can zip that back up and that's my nutrition in there. I'm now going to spin the bag round to the other side pocket. Again, double zipped, open him up. And this one has two large zip pocket areas. One's meshed, one's not meshed. Um, so what am I going to do in here? Well, let's put in the meshed one, my spare run socks. Deliberately kept those out. They could have gone in the end of the bag, I know. My spare bike socks. Um, I'll zip him up there. Uh, in the other zip pocket, I'm going to put my race belt and I picked quite a chunky one with a pouch on it. So again, I'm not scrimping on volume and size here. So I'm going to push him in there and do him up. And then in the rest of this bit, just kind of accessories type things. So 
spare laces, anti-chafe glide, a couple of rolls of different types of tape, blisters, etc. I'm not a big, I don't get lots of blisters, I'm lucky, but there we go. Um, ice pack, you never know, twist an ankle or something. And it could have gone almost anywhere and I was tempted just to slide it back in with the wetsuit, but I'm going to put a spare swim hat in there. I say spare swim hat, because invariably we have the swim hat provided by the race organizers. So I'm now gonna zip him up and we're just getting a little bit full and tight there. On this side as well, you will notice we've got two more little pouches. I'm gonna tip the bag up a little bit. There we go, give it a squash. And these are drinks bottle pouches. I brought the smaller version the sort of 600, 650 size, and I bought the larger version, the 750, 800 size. We unzip the pockets, open them up, and we've got the elasticated. So just to show how each one sits, remember that this is pretty full. There's the smaller one, and there's the larger one. Okay. And we'll just, there we are and the zip part does hook over and actually keeps them now fairly, fairly solid. Uh, don't forget when you're carrying this bag, if I carry by the handles, then they're going to be upright that way. If I put them on as a duffel bag, they're going to sit upright that way. So we're almost there. Let me now just spin the bag round to the top end where we have a hang loop that we can unclip and we can clip and hang the bag up should we wish to and you will notice there's also we hope you'll notice there's an end zip here which if I zip that down that enables me to pull out my helmet net now the helmet net it has velcro they loop through into the red loops so you loop through the red loop and close it. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time fiddling here. I'm just gonna do a quick camera switch. And there we are, by the magic of video, there's my helmet, happily retained. One last thing, don't worry if it's raining. If I turn over, so imagining that the straps will be on my back, I have a zip at the base of this end and inside, I have a rain cover which quite nicely fits over the bag and will keep certainly the very worst of any rain off. It's a good size, fits nicely. There we go. I touched on carrying this bag. So here are the main straps. You can see they're designed like rucksack straps, but we have hand grips on there. Uh, in the middle of them or just above the middle so we can carry this as a hold all or we can wear it as a rucksack before I put it on to show you the rucks well I'll start in English um, the rucksack has a chest strap to it and the chest strap is adjustable up and down so you can get it to fit you I'll just stick it on and show you Here's the bag in rucksack mode. Hopefully you'll see the chest strap is done up. If I turn around, helmet is now located on the top in this mode and the drinks bottles are pretty much upright so they're not going to leak anywhere. It's, it sits really comfortably. These straps are quite wide and they're reasonably well padded. Though I have no problem uh, pushing my bike in one hand the other hand's free, or possibly even carrying something else. It may be an uh, aero helmet in a bag, in its own bag, because I've kept that separate. So, yeah, the Audio M9, um, I'm gonna call it sports bag. Um, it's a brilliant gym bag and tri bag. You've seen what I've put in here. I can't believe that anyone is going to actually want that much kit in, in one go. Uh, I certainly don't, and that's, if it's going to the gym, there's obviously a lot of kit there that's not going to the gym, and if it's going to a tri competition, a tri event, then there's extra kit that's in there that I wouldn't be taking to that. So, uh, yes, do I recommend this bag? Absolutely. It's quite expensive, 
Uh, but then again, Audio Kit is quality um, and there are more expensive and less good quality out there. So yes, I do recommend this bag. I hope you've liked the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed, well, please click on the little round picture just down there. You might want to visit our website as well, just down there. Up there, we have the review of the Zoot Ultra Tri Bag, and up there, the review of the Tyre or TYR Poolside Bag. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, see you again soon.